Hello, Robles fourth grade. You're now going into your third week of e-learning, and that is an awesome job. I'm seeing some really good work from you guys. I know this has been kind of a weird time and everything, but you guys have been really doing an awesome job. I love seeing all of your faces on Zoom. I love all the messages I'm getting. It's awesome. I love all that participation. So I hope you guys had a really good, if you celebrated Easter yesterday, um, hopefully you still had a little bit of fun. Maybe you visit the Easter Bunny. Um, if you did, if you don't celebrate it or if you didn't do anything, I just hope you had a really good three day weekend. So what we're going to do today, because last week we were working on classifying quadrilaterals and classifying triangles using our lines and our angles that we have uh, been talking about. This week, we're going to move into something a little bit different. What we're going to be looking at this week, and you guys may have heard of this before, we're going to be looking at lines of symmetry. Now, if you don't know what symmetry means or something is symmetrical, what that means is if you take something and if you were to cut it down the middle, it's going to look the exact same. So like your face is symmetrical. If you were to take a marker and draw a line straight down your face, your left and your right side are going to look exactly the same. That's also true of a lot of different objects. So for example, I have this piece of paper here and you guys can also do this at home. This is a rectangular piece of paper. And if I were to fold it, to make sure all my edges were completely perfectly lined up, edge to edge, corner to corner, and if I were to crease that, just like this, you get something that kind of looks like that. But if you open it and you look at this line down here, and that's your line of symmetry, that's your symmetrical line, this part, and this part are going to be perfectly even if you fold them over, just like this. If you fold them along that line of symmetry, you're going to have two perfectly even sides. So this is really handy, especially if you're trying to share something, for example, with your uh, little brother or little sister. So let's say that you guys have a cupcake, and I want you to think about your fractions here. Because if you're cutting something into half, remember, both sides have to be equal. Just like with fractions, every single piece needs to be equivalent and equal. It needs to be the same exact size no matter what. So if you think of like a cupcake or something, uh, something nice and sweet that you want to eat and share with your sibling, um, if you cut that right down the middle, you and your sister or brother should be getting the exact same amount because you're cutting it in half. Remember our fractions, that's one over two, half, one half. Both of those are going to be the exact same size. Now, same with the line of symmetry, making it symmetrical. Both pieces need to be perfectly the same size. And I keep reiterating that because I want you to think about it because if I were to take this piece of paper, and originally this piece of paper was folded up into thirds because they're a lot more skilled than Miss Antis can perfectly fold it up into a nice third, unlike I could. So this is folded up into thirds. And I'm just gonna fold, we'll say, we'll fold just this. And I made that my line. If I were to unfold this, I could see that this piece is nowhere near as big as this piece. So this is not symmetrical. If I were to make it symmetrical, I would have to fold it in half and get these two bigger pieces right here. And those two are perfectly equal. So what we're doing today is recognizing and drawing lines of symmetry and identify line symmetric figures. So we're going to look at those symmetrical uh, lines. We're going to see if maybe we can draw a line of symmetry. And this is stuff that you guys can also do at home too. And then we're also going to recognize figures where if we look at them, we go, oh, I can tell that there's one line of symmetry in this, no problem. So when we're talking about uh, symmetry, and Ms. Wackus and I were talking about this too, when Ms. Wackus and I were going to school, a lot of what they did was looking at our letters, like our alphabet, A, B, C, D, and so on and so forth. And a lot of times we would have to determine, are these letters symmetrical or not? Could you fold them in half and make them symmet uh, symmetrical? And so that's kind of what this textbook is kind of showing us too, which if you guys need help and can and want to look in this textbook, remember you go to Clever and then you hit the Pearson Realize. 
And this lesson is 16-4 line symmetry. So that way, if you need a little extra help, you guys can do this at home. You have all of your drawing tools here. So you can totally do this all on your own and that's not a worry. So we're going to, it's giving us this problem. How can a mirror help you solve this problem? Because a line of symmetry, when something is symmetrical, if you were to hold a mirror up to it, it would look exactly the same. Okay, and you guys can try that at home. If you held up a sheet of paper to a mirror like this, the mirror reflection should be exactly the same. And that kind of helps you think of symmetry. So let's look at this square. We'll, shape, we'll start off with our basic shapes. If we were to look at this square, I know that if I did look at it, I can probably find one, at least one line of symmetry. So let's look. If I, I'm going to switch this over to a nice straight line, because remember, it has to be perfectly equal. We don't want all squibble squabbles. If I were to take this and do that, like it's not going to be exactly perfect. I'm doing as best as I can. If we were to fold this part over this part, then we would see that they are going to be the exact same size. And that's really cool. So, now, what we can do, we're going to kind of scroll down here. So I pulled this up, and it has that square and that G again. And now I'm going to kind of, I'm going to draw this, because I want us looking again at this square. And I want us looking at this square because I showed you one way to draw your line of symmetry. And here's that. That's the way I drew it originally. And you can absolutely draw it like that. Now some shapes, and this is something that we're going to be getting into a little bit more later this week, so I don't want to spend too much time on it. I'm only going to show you one line of symmetry today. This shape can have more than one line, though. So if I were to do that and look at how many lines of symmetry this square can have, I can draw up another piece. So one way I did it was drawing the line this way which is vertically, vertical, up and down, like our columns with area models. Or, um, and then we also have horizontally, think of like the sun rising over the horizon, horizontally. So we can cut it across like this and fold it, what you guys would call, um, that would be hamburger style. So you oh, close it like this. Now, on top of that, there's another one. Make my eraser nice and big here so I don't spend too much time erasing. I can also draw it like this. Some of you may, uh, when you eat a sandwich, you might cut your sandwiches like that. And you're going to get uh, two triangles with it. So that's a third way. And there is another way. And all you have to do is just start on the other corner and work diagonally. So the reason why I'm showing you this and the reason why I'm kind of getting ahead of just the one singular line of symmetry is because I don't want you guys to lock into your head that there can only be one way to cut something. All of you think in completely different ways from each other. And especially with symmetry, some shapes and some items that you might see, you're going to find that there's more than one way to find that line of symmetry. So if I say that this way is my line of symmetry that I'm cutting it, somebody else may say that the horizontal way might be their way of cutting it, and that's perfectly fine. You just have to remember that both sides have to be perfectly equal. And so I'm going to show that with the G here, because remember I said that when I was being taught symmetry and Ms. Bacchus was being taught symmetry, we did letters. We don't know why. We're not sure. That's just how we were taught. So if I were to take a line, use purple this time. If I were to take a line and I were, let's start in the middle. And the reason I start in the middle is because that's just a very, that's just a good place to start. That's where I like to start. And I'm going to look at this and I'm going to go, hmm, is that symmetrical? Is this side of the purple line the same as this side of the purple line? And I know just by looking at that, absolutely not. We got all this extra funny stuff going on right here. We got the little tail of the G. So that's not, that's not symmetrical that way. So let's see if maybe there's another way we can find this to be a good symmetrical way. We'll try the horizontal way. That's another one that you, might, you guys might like to try. 
And I can tell by looking at that, that's still not symmetrical because we have, again, this tail is kind of causing some funky stuff to happen. If I were to fold that G over on top of itself, they would not be the exact same. If your sibling got this part, which has more to it than this part, I know you ain't going to be too happy. So, that's fine. Maybe we'll try the diagonal cut. Like I said, some of you might cut your sandwiches like that. Who's to say? Maybe it'll work. Ooh, I don't think that's going to work, though. Because, again, you have all this right here, this tail. And if you were to fold that up, that's not going to match with all this. That's not going to work. So I would have to say G. I don't think that the letter G has any kind of symmetry in it. So. And that's just kind of how you have to determine. Because some of those, some of these shapes and these figures that we're going to be working with, it might look maybe at first like they might be symmetrical. But then once you actually start to work with it and draw your lines of symmetry and try to find those symmetrical pieces, you're going to kind of realize, wait a second, not I can't do that with everything. In the same boat, though, if you look at something and you go, mm -mm, that's not going to be symmetrical at all, because maybe we have some funky shapes out there. But then you start drawing your lines of symmetry and you're like, hold on here. If I were to fold, the, fold them on top of each other, they would be perfectly the same size. So that's why it's kind of fun to test out with like all these tools and everything so that way you can figure that out. And that's what we'll be kind of working on this week is you get to have all the fun of drawing these and figuring it out. So one of my favorite things about line of symmetry, because like I said, geometry, this whole unit is one of my favorites. I love symmetry because in nature, things tend to be symmetrical, be it by um, accident or on purpose. So if you're out and about and you're driving along on the road and you see the semi truck or if you look at it, if you were to draw a line straight down, remember that's a vertical line, you're going to see that that truck is symmetrical looking at it from the front. And because if you were to take this side and fold it over, if you were just super duper strong and able to fold that over, it would look exactly the same. Now, if I were to do my horizontal line though, those aren't going to be the same because that top part and that bottom part, if you were to fold them, are not going to be exactly the same. So, and you can kind of think of this in real life. Don't think, don't just think of it like shapes, like triangles and squares and all this other stuff. Think of it in real life situations. Um, if you were to take this truck and really look at it, or even a car, if you go outside and look at your, your family car, you could take like a, your hand and kind of draw like an imaginary line and find that both sides of it are exactly the same. They mirror each other. You know how when you look at a look in a mirror and you're looking right back at yourself and that's how you look and everything in the mirror is the same as on you? That's exactly what symmetry is. They mirror each other. So keep that in mind. So here we have a hexagon. Remember, a hexagon has six sides to it. A hexagon has lines of symmetry to it. Now, remember what I said earlier, where some shapes may have more than one line, but today we're just going to focus on how you can draw that one line. So if I'm looking at this, I know I can cut it like this, and that's easy peasy. I know I can cut it like straight across like this, and of course mine's not gonna be super equal. But you wanna try to get it as close to even as possible, because remember, this is like fractions where you have to make each side perfectly fair. So that's another way you can draw it that horizontal way. You can draw it this diagonal cut way. Remember, that's like if you're cutting your sandwich into little triangles. So now you're going to get, um, I wonder if you guys remember what this shape is called. And if you don't, it's two trapezoids. One and two trapezoids. If you folded this trapezoid over on this one, they would be the exact same. Same with if I were to draw my line from up here and connect it down here. Now these two trapezoids mirror each other. They're symmetrical. And now here we have this kind of funky looking shape. So remember what I said about how sometimes you might get a weird shape and you look at it and you go, well, maybe, maybe not. So this one we definitely have to test out because if I look at that, I don't really know. So we got to figure this out. So. I'm going to draw my vertical lines again. That's where I like to start. And I can tell there are no way those are not symmetrical. I have this weird kind of indent in here. I have this weird lump here, but I don't have that on the other side. These don't mirror each other. If I were to fold this over one another, this piece would be sticking out and this piece would be sticking out. So definitely not. 
Now let's try another way. Maybe, maybe we'll try a horizontal cut. No, that does not work. And if we look at it, because once again, if I were to fold this piece over this piece, they would kind of be running into each other and it would not work at all. Well, what about diagonal? We've been doing some diagonal cuts. Oh, definitely not. That's totally not going to work. This is not going to fold up nice and pretty and match exactly. And if I do it with the other side too, same thing. These are not going to line up nice and pretty. So, so what I'm looking at next are these four shapes here, 8, 9, 10, and 11. And it's wanting us to tell if it's a good line of symmetry. So if we look at this first one, that's a pentagon. I can tell because it has one, two, three, four, five sides. And they drew the line vertically. That is going to be a symmetrical figure. And the reason for that is because if I were to fold this side on top of this side, they would line up perfectly. If I look at number nine, though, I know that if I were to fold this up to this, this piece would be sticking out and these two would... Uh, this corner wouldn't line up to that corner nice and pretty. Number 10, they drew a horizontal line. And this is symmetrical. And the reason for that is because, again, if you were to take this top part and fold it along that line, it would line up perfectly with that bottom part. And number 11 is also symmetrical, where they drew the vertical line on this rectangle. Because if you were to take this part and fold it over that line of symmetry, that dotted line, it would line up perfectly with this side. So again, if you guys need the textbook at any time, you are more than welcome to go into it and look at it and see all of this work. Um, you can also practice with it too. There's a bunch of practice in here, so don't feel like this is the only... So if we look at these, we're once again able to draw our own lines of symmetry. So if we take this E, make it look a little bit nicer, the more equal best as I can. So if I were to take that, this won't let me get it perfectly centered, but if I were able to, I could take this top and fold that down over that bottom, and that would give me an equal line of symmetry. Now if I look at this, this is one that I'm definitely going to have to test out. I'm not too sure. So I'm going to draw my line horizontally at first. And if I look at it, I kind of see that this one goes in a different sort of way. It's a little bit longer than the one up here. So they look almost identical, but I know that if this one's a little bit longer, they're not going to line up perfectly equal. Um, and if I were to take this and line it up, I know that this side and this side are not going to line up equally either. So if I take my oval, I'm gonna do a vertical line on this. And that lines up perfectly. If I were to take this side and fold it over that side, they would line up nicely. Same with my three leaf clover, this side perfectly lines up with this side. And this rainbow, this side folding over that line of symmetry would line up perfectly with this. This snowflake, and actually, you know what? I'm going to do the snowflake a different direction because I've been doing a lot of vertical. I'm going to do a diagonal on this one. This top piece would fold over perfectly onto this bottom piece. This part would fold over onto that part, this would fold over onto that. Now, this arrow is going to give me some issues, because if this was just a rectangle or if this had another arrow pointing down, then we wouldn't have a problem. But no matter which way I cut this, these are not going to be symmetrical. So 18 and 13 so far are my non-symmetrical shapes so far. And let's check number 19. Let me try that so it looks a little bit more even. Now I'll also cut it horizontally instead. So the top and the bottom pieces line up perfectly together. And so those are my lines of symmetry. And I'll draw those again for you really quickly. Just so you have them. Make sure they're all nice and even or as best as I can get them. And as close as I can get them. So. Now, remember too that all of these can, um, this symmetrical stuff can also be found all around your house. So if you want to play around with it, take some paper. You can absolutely do that. Look at your food, look at your furniture, things like that, and see if you were to take an invisible or um, a fake line 
and if you were to draw it, would it be equal on both sides? And so I want you guys to think about that. Um, so after this, you guys do have an exit ticket actually about that on something in your house that is symmetrical. See if you can find something in your home that has some symmetry to it. When you're done with that, you're going to get on to iReady. Remember to get your 60 minutes of math each and every week. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And if you have any questions, please remember to message me. Thank you.